First on the list is insecure workload configuration. Workloads are the actual containers running in pods inside of nodes as a part of a cluster. There are services, deployments, replica sets, daemon sets, side cards, and other possible configurations and objects that work together to create and balance the workloads. The workloads themselves can have insecure configurations that would allow the workloads to break out of the isolations and security controls provided by the underlying container runtime. Here is the sample configuration file that allow and disable many security defaults provided by Kubernetes. Flipping these flags breaks the isolations provided by the container runtime and makes the pod with all capabilities also mounts the root of the host file system right into the container, allowing for all types of shenanigans. Insecure workload configuration can be remediated in many ways. Containers in pods should run as non-root users to minimize the permissions of workloads running in pods. Containers in pods should not share a host's process ID namespace or an IPC namespace or users or network namespace, which act as isolations between the workloads and the node. Admission controllers such as Open Policy Agent Gatekeeper can be used to disallow pods that do not meet security requirements or policies. Using pod security standards to minimize the privileges a pod obtains by setting pod security standards to baseline or restricted. Here is an example of a pod specification on the left that uses the root user as an identify, and on the right is a pod specification that uses a user that is non-root. Here's an example of a pod on the left that runs with the highest level of privileges and a pod on the right that turns off privileges explicitly using privileged false under security context. That's it for this lecture. Let's move on to the next one.